Welcome back once more to the game development of the game, which doesn't have a name, but which is... I'm going to be amazing, I know. <laughs> doesn't matter. Let's jump into the game, and there's a lot of changes to talk about, so let's just jump into it. Yeah, no, I am the right side of this time, but... If you're used to seeing me on the left side here, you might be a little bit sad, but it's just so that I won't block this new thing that we've got right here. Also called a minimap. So the minimap, of course, is going to reveal to you the room that you're in, of course, but it's also going to reveal every room that you have seen. So if you've seen a room, you will see it there on the map, and it makes navigation so much easier, especially when this becomes more maze-like. It's very, very easy to see on the map. Hopefully I'm going to add a button here or something so it can increase the size. You can have it overlaid over the game and you can see exactly where to go on the map. So now it's a little bit small, maybe. You can't see the entire dungeon in just this window. Uh, so the player is this triangle here, and you can see whenever you move here, the triangle moves. I'm going to show you later how I did it, because that's very easy if you want to add a minimap to your game. I mean, there is even easier ways of doing it than what I've done here, but it, I think this was pretty easy. I think I did this in six or seven hours or something. I added this minimap to the game, so it wasn't that difficult. So, uh, as you can see here, we have some sm these squares right here that are a little bit brownish. These represent just normal squares that you can walk on. The triangle is the player, and hopefully people are going to figure this out. I think it's kind of intuitive. And then you see the small squares here that are a little bit more uh, grayish in tone. They represent doors. So now you know that this room that you're in here, even by not looking at the room, I mean, you can just look around and see whenever, oh, there's a door. But you can also look at the minimap and see that there's a door in front of you now. So, also, that's one change. We're going to see how the minimap evolves as we move around and move about. Also, I've added a lot more props to uh, the game. So there's a lot of more things. Like these holes here used to look uh, not so good before. I mean, they're not fantastic or anything, but they look much better with these metal bars around them, I feel like. Uh, and there's a much bigger variety in what can spawn. As you can see on the walls here, there's like a statue. It's a little bit hard to see, and unfortunately two of these statues have spawned next to each other. I don't have a check uh, so that this does not happen. So sometimes things of the same type is going to spawn next to each other and might not look super good when that happens. Uh, but this statue, it's very difficult to see, but it's actually... It's a skull here. It, it, it's a dead person looking at you. But it's very difficult to see if this is a human or if this is a, uh, a skull person. <laughs> skull. Skeleton, Chris! They don't, they're not called skull persons. <laughs> Skeleton, sure. <laughs> sure if you want to be that way. Uh, and also, there is a variation of this prop which has uh, like urns in it, so they, I think it looks a little bit cool. Uh, there are now candles that can be... Uh, before, candles could only be put either one like in groups like this on the floor, or they could be put in uh, like candle holders which had like 20-30 candles in them. But now they can also be spawned in separate candles holders which can only hold one candle. A small change, but you know, all these small changes make it look a little bit better, I think. Uh, so, also with the enemies here. Now, when you don't hover over an enemy, uh, there's no text, you don't know what the name of the enemy is. But if you hover over the enemy, it will say Skeleton Berserker. Also, his life meter looks about one million times better than it did last time, because I didn't change the life meter to reflect the new interface that I'm going for. Also, you can see the enemies on the minimap, and what way they're facing. They're of course red. The enemies are red, you are white on the map. So if you attack this guy, you can see also that the life meter now, it shows you in white how much damage it took. So the damage stays a little bit in white, and I think that makes it a little bit more... I don't know what the word is. <laughs> juicy. Makes it juicy. Juicy pussy. Uh... <laughs> a little bit naughty, Chris. I know. I know. Uh, I didn't intend to say it, but it just flew out of my mouth. So also there's these uh, angel statues as another possible prop that can spawn. There are more props, we're gonna see. Okay, they spawned 
Uh, mostly there are not things here, but that's fine. We'll move someplace else and find some more new crops. Oh, by the way, have I muted the audio? I have muted the audio. And I, and I realized that now, <laughs> that I muted audio. I even have these in my ears. And I, okay. Yeah, there is audio still. <laughs> I haven't deleted the audio. Uh, and there's a Templar. Of course, there's no difference between the Templar and the Berserker. We're gonna add differences. We're gonna add skill trees. We're gonna add skills and everything. Another change. Now, when you click on an item, as for instance, here we have spawned a pair of arm leather things or arm chain. Uh, before, what happened is that it just showed you the inventory like this. Now, what happens is if you have a slot, it, it has a couple of checks. First of all, if you don't have anything equipped in the slot in which the item that you're picking up is in and you don't have the inventory open, it's going to put it in that slot, in that open slot that you have. That makes it much easier when you pick up things, especially in the beginning. It might not matter later on, but in the beginning at least, it's gonna matter a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit faster, you don't have to navigate the inventory for everything you pick up. That's the first change. If you don't have a slot to put it in, it's going to, if you have a open bag slot in your bag, in your inventory, it's going to put it in your inventory instead. If it's, there's no bag slot and there's no regular slot to put it in, basically the, your inventory is full, it's then going to instead open the inventory. So that's, now as you can see, it just equips it. Like this. Now we have them equipped. And I feel like that's a pretty good change, especially since this is supposed to be a little bit more of a roguelike. Okay, there's another angel that has spawned there. And is there anything new in this room? No. No, no, no. Still, all these levels are randomly generated, so... So, 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 so... And here we have... Uh, nothing? <laughs> nothing that has spawned? No, that's fine. That's fine, okay, and here's another... Ain't frack! <laughs> I want to see, show you new stuff! There's nothing new. Uh, we might actually... Close this door, we might rest a little bit. Unfortunately, when I rest, I should have pressed the button. But they didn't do it. Oop. Uh, so we've rested need to kill this templarian here walk straight into him like a scrub but that's fine oh. there he is he's dead i found a chain mail that's kind of nice he looks pretty schmexy still does have any pants he looks a little bit a little bit cool uh okay found a pair of plated boots so, <laughs> still doesn't have pants looks amazing looks amazing brother don't worry about it. Yeah, we're gonna kill this berserker. Of course, the the fighting is going to be better. These guys are gonna have unique skills and everything, but we're not we're not really there yet in the development. Okay, there's another enemy. We might die here, actually. Didn't intend to, but I don't know. I think we're I think this guy has missed twice now. So perfect. We'll rest a little bit, and again, I pressed the wrong button. That's fine. Rest up, and as you can see. The minimap is revealed, and if there's a uh, thing that you can interact with, it's going to have a little bit of a different color. As for instance, here you can see there was a coffin. That's because that makes a little bit lighter color on the map. And I'm going to show you how to do this in just just a few minutes. I just wanted to show you some more. Oh, there it is! Another, there's another one. This thing there. There's a chance that these things are going to spawn. These pillars that hold up the roof, of course. The roof. The roof, the roof is being held up by pillars. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we're circled down. Didn't drop anything. There's another angel statue. Okay. Oh, we're circled. We we'll smack him down. Bang! Boom! Okay, but that's. Uh, I think that's about it, actually. There are some more props which didn't spawn. There are, for instance, there are health pools, much like in Diablo 2, you know, these uh, look like a, some sort of, some sort of, I don't know, even know what these are called in English. Vessels, health vessels, like a, like a small little pool, little bath thing. <laughs> like a bird bath, imagine a bird bath with blood in its side of it, <laughs> essentially. That's a grim image, I know. But that's the best uh, explanation I can do. <laughs> Let's see here. 
That was my phone, by the way. If you wonder where did that sound come from. So, I want to just show you how to do this minimap if you're interested in doing it yourself in your own game, because I see yeah, simple. I mean, I'm a little bit aided by the fact that I have already have an algorithm which spawns everything in these rooms. So it's just for me, it's just adding on that it spawns a little bit more things essentially. So under every room, as you can see, there is a couple of objects there. You can see this is the minimap essentially. So attached to the player is just a simple triangle. We can see this under the player. So whenever the player moves, this triangle is moving on this minimap under you. But then you say, can't you just see the minimap under you if you just angle the camera correctly? I guess you could get around that by just angling the camera differently. But the thing is, these uh, meshes right here, they are in a separate layer called the minimap layer. And on our main camera, we are excluding that layer. Uh, where is... There it is, culling mask. Here we are in excluding the inventory avatar, which is the character you can see when you look at the inventory, and we're excluding the minimap. So these things are not being rendered on the main camera, but they're being rendered on a separate camera called the minimap camera. And the minimap camera only looks at the minimap. It has a orthographic view, which is essentially 2D view. And um, then you just have to play around with the size parameter. The size parameter is how much you're going to see on this map. So if I change the size parameter, you're going to see that everything's become smaller or bigger, depending on... It's essentially the zoom, you could say, of the orthographic camera, because it's 2D, right? But how, how do you change the... The angle, you can't change the angle, it's just straight, right? So you have to change the size. And then I just have to find the correct parameters so that this thing takes up the appropriate amount of space in the left corner. And then I just put an image on top of this just to have a nice board. And that is, uh, that is how to make a minimap. It was super duper simple. I just needed to plug in these things right here which are just unlit. Have a look at the materials here. Let's see here. Go into... Materials. Let's see here. Materials. Minimap. So these are just unlit objects with a specific color and they're essentially just squares and triangles. Very, very easy to recreate for if you want to have these type of things in your game. And whenever there's just a hole, when you can't go somewhere, it just doesn't render anything. There's nothing to represent holes yet. And I don't think there's gonna be. I think, I think the minimap looks good enough for now. There's probably gonna be a lot of improvements, and I'm probably just gonna laugh at this later, at how bad the minimap looked. But for the time being, it kind of works out. Next thing I'm gonna work on is how to... Uh, I want to have like stairs that spawn randomly in the map so that it can go down to a level below and every level you go down there's going to be of course more difficult and more difficult enemies at some point there's going to be an over map where you can go to different places and complete different dungeons a little bit like darkest dungeon you like you go into a kind of instance and then you go down and down and down and you already just you know you explore that dungeon more and more and more and then you're done with that dungeon and you get back to the overworld maybe trade, buy some items, sell some things, you go on to another adventure, and so on and so forth. Uh, but that's the thing I wanted to do next, so that you can go down and generate a new level, and all these levels, of course, can have different biomes. So for instance, you could start off on the cathedral level, which might be a level higher up, and then you go down, and then you get into the catacombs, you go down further, you get into some caves or something, and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's the thing to work on next, but that's gonna take a little bit of time. I'm, I'm actually started to work on the How the stairs and everything is going to look, but that's that's all I've done. That's going to be in the next episode. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you next time.